Welcome down to Cobra. A massive thank you to the park. We're going to take you in and show you behind the scenes of the ride. I've been looking forward to seeing Cobra behind the scenes. This ride is criminally underrated, and I mean that, criminally under underrated. The only one of its type we've got in the country. Come join us, come join us. Here we are with the Gerslauer. Like wild mouse coaster, which is down here. And again, so uh, Cobra has six trains, four of which are on the track at the moment. And you can see sort of the transfer area here. Transfer track would come across and then the trains would come off and this is where they're worked on. But again, you very rarely get to appreciate the up closeness of some of these. And I love Cobra. I've said in our vlog, if you didn't see it, that you know, you you kind of don't appreciate that there aren't any more Gerslauer type rides of this in the UK. Everyone thinks it's a Maurer, everyone thinks that it's just a wild mouse coaster, but it's not the case at all. Um, and it is in stunning condition. So I've just spoken to the, the great engineer there uh, who actually bought this ride in. It was constructed in 2005, opened in 2006, and just explained to me about how they do it. So these, I mean, look, this is a, a ride at a theme park. Look, look at the quality of it. It is utterly insane. So these graphics are actually sandblasted in, which is why they don't they don't peel, and it's why it looks really, really good. He said the, the gent that paints these used to paint Jaguars, which is why the quality of the detail which Portland's put together is on another level. Uh, Gerslauer take these back. He said every few years, it was a couple of years ago, these went back and they get completely stripped back. So you see a lot of parks that just paint over. You know, as it wears, you just paint over. Portland's actually take these completely back to metal, take them back to metal and then repaint them, which is why they're not bumpy. It's why they look brand new, absolutely brand new, which is, you know, stunning when you see under here you can see sort of the brakes and the condition of it is just insane absolutely insane and then we have the wheels they use so generally they will go to Gerslauer for wheels but they certainly use premium ones he said you know they don't have they don't have the budget on health and safety which is you know something you want to hear absolutely want to hear and they use the best of the best. So, you know, these wheels have actually come off. However, they still make the grade. They're still good enough to be on there, which is something. And you can even see obviously old seats where old seats are replaced as well. Go ahead on these, but look at this, that. Just the condition of them is insane. And they just sort of roll, I like that. So he does say they have a sand blasting workshop, this isn't it, where they can take these back and strip these down as well. As I said, these go back to Gerslau and these, these get done there and the rest of it they can do here. He said it takes ages to do, but that weaker car to strip right down from, from paint to repaint, which isn't too long in fairness. Yeah, so this is, but the park's never massively documented. So see, wow. It's had a good winter the last year. These two. And that's when they come off and everything stripped down yeah. to. Yeah, and then the final job is obviously you change the, uh, the bushings. See the spray where they're all tested. Wow, look at these. As I say, when they look like what they are now. Now, a certain amount of spare parts are obviously kept in here, and you can see as well where they come directly from Gerslauer. You have wheels, you can see one's labelled, and then here is so this is part of the NVT testing at the end of the year. So they're sprayed obviously, and it highlights any issues with it. And you can see everything is broken down, laid out nicely so they don't lose things. The wheels are checked. 
And then, yeah, back to the building of it, which is just something else. Certain parts are kept spare, so motors, if you require, uh, if they require a motor, that's kept spare as well. And I did have this argument with Cody earlier that I knew the train design had changed in the last few years, and it has indeed changed. It did used to have seat belts, and this used to be open. So when you look at these, these were all open, the initial design review, and you can see the seat belts. But important, like everyone else, do go through design reviews and look at ways of improving health and safety. So of course, adding these side bits on allows people to keep their feet inside the car, and the seat belts have been removed in the last couple of years, which I thought they had been. He told me no. He lied to me. He lied to me. But just look at it. Absolutely incredible. So the engineer has said as well that they can test the um, lap bar release as well. They've got a special one to test that which links up there so they can test all the electrics and things in here which are obviously generally wired up in the station. In here you can fit four cars but realistically only two to work on at once for, for sort of space purpose if you will um, but they add a, add a, add a push they can fit free and that's where these wheel bits come in obviously to check the wheel parts which is why they're different to the track and you can see there is three paces for them for them to do but yeah the detail they put in here at Portland's is incredible and massive thank you to the park for letting me come in here it's during the day this isn't during the behind the scenes event to come and have a look because anyone that follows the channel knows that I am absolutely fascinated with these. Absolutely fascinated with behind the scenes and how these go together. Now one thing actually, because we get to see some of the coasters at um, our local parks, and you'll know, and I think I've seen it on other coasters as well, that the brake fins are generally separate. Well on here, they're not. They're actually part of the car, so you can see where they're welded on and off when they need replacing. But they're actually part of the car. I think he said they've only been changed once. As we said, certain bits they send back to uh, Gerslauer for, for remanufacturing, and then a lot of it they do in here or can remove it from here and go to another one. But yeah, it's all part of it, and you can see the welds and everything underneath. And then the ratchets, just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, as I say, yeah, it can be a little bit. Uh intimidating for the newer engineers when they first see it because there's a lot of buttons and switches and keys but there is yeah but actually once you get into it and um, certain sections will be opening up you're only using certain ones um, it kind of makes sense in the end so during the day generally they wouldn't touch this during the day no one will touch this unless we need to be involved for whatever reason yeah. um, this is how we reopen the ride after an uh, east stop as we saw earlier yeah. uh, so each brake has to be released uh, separately from here, the controls, um, and again, it won't let you if, if it thinks there's another car in the way or in the block, it won't let you. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty fail-safe, pretty foolproof, hopefully. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, you can control it from, from here, really. It's uh, ride on in the morning. Um, point five is a is a magnetic brake there. Yeah, on that. So these are, the the these are the brakes around the ride. These are the brakes around the ride, yeah. Four is over there, then three, two, and one further on, and then you, you lift on, finally lift on here. And they're all block brakes, aren't they, those ones? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We test them uh, one per day using a block test. Yeah. On a daily to make sure they're all. Uh, they're rings keyed as well, so you like. Keyed, yeah, there's so no overriding, there's no nothing, there's no. No, well, if uh, if it's faulted or if it's been east off, yeah. it will ask you to double check that the block is clear, um, and then you, uh, using this key switch here, you then say, yes, I've double checked it's all clear, and it will then open the brake for you. Uh, we can individually move each set of motors along the station here, using these if and when we need to. Normally, the first time we just do a car swap. And it's um, just the engineers that, that deal with it, I'm guessing, yeah. Just the engineers that deal with yeah. the side, yeah. Yeah, over the engineering team will deal with this. Yeah, that makes sense. And then this is telling you what's occupied, I'm guessing. Occupied. That's a really yeah. confusing looking screen. Uh, yes. I... Yeah. So I'm guessing red is where cars are. Yeah, so if we follow the next one going through, we should be able to see it going up the lift. 
Right, where's... Here. Right, that's lift, yeah. Here, lift is occupied. Right, okay. As it goes through different sensors, you'll see them yep. flash as well. So that's showing the next area is green. Yeah. Safe to go through. Next area is free, yeah, so it won't stop at the top of the lift. So what's this blue? Is blue is... Transferring. Right out. I'm trying to look at the cameras now. <coughs> that's it, that's the areas that are now going to be occupied. Yeah. So this should be our car we're following here. Yeah. Coming through break the wire. Oh, there we are. So it shows you what the colours are showing, what, what block they're in effectively. Yeah. Right, yeah. And then that should go as well to the CCTV here, you can see. That's good coverage on the CCTV. Yeah, it's very good, yeah. yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty comprehensive across the park really on the rise, which is good. This one especially, obviously, we need to know where each car is. Yeah. Um, and then we're changing up here, so yeah. So yeah. We should be coming through break four now. Yeah, it's come through. Yeah. It's coming through the next section. Into the magnetic brakes. We've got five, got the transfer track now. And then it comes. And then it comes. So if one stops and you haven't even stopped it, the rest will just stop. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. no questions asked, no. it just stops. It will stop, or if they get too close together, if one slows down for some reason, the other one's catching up, for whatever reason it may be, again, if they get too close together, they just stop the line. So is it a variable lift hill speed? Um, it is, yes. Yeah. Uh, we don't tend to change it. It don't. stays where it, where it is, but we can do. But if it, would it know it was catching up another car? Uh, the lift won't, but no. the sensors will just stop it. So it will just, it will just, it will just stop it so if, yeah, it, if so it does. So, one is getting too okay. close, it'll stop it. Stop the whole thing. Um, so, yeah, uh, when, when it's colder, the cars are going a bit, little bit slower, the breeze will be a bit thicker in the wheel barrels. Yeah. Um, and then once it's warm, we can up the speed of the lift if we need to then. So how do you let it know how many cars are on the track? It knows itself. Oh, it knows? Yeah. Wow. It will, well, it will only it will sense them as they go through. Uh, but it's, yeah, probably not as complicated as it knows how many there are, but it knows where each one is and how close they are to each other. Right, and okay. It's parameters for how close they can be or, you know, each block, it will stop it from there. So, um, so it might not necessarily know there's six on there. It knows where each one is in relation to the other ones, yeah. and it controls it that way. And would stop it that way. <coughs> oh, yeah. brilliant. So these are the speeds in which they're... This is what they're completing, where it's, it's, it's timed, I believe, from where it's hit, from the lift top to just before break five. So again, when we're opening up in the morning, we can have a little look at this. Um, if one of them's far too slow, that might indicate a problem, maybe a tight wheel, something along them lines. So the variance on this will very much be the weight of the car, yeah, most the likely at this yeah. time of the day. Yeah. yeah, this time of the day, the weight of the car will be uh, will be what we'll, we'll be determining it. That's really clever. And in the morning, so what do you look for? What's the what's your like? It should make it round. Depending on the time of the year, we're around the around the 50 second mark, 52 seconds around there. Again, again, that's that variable depending on weather conditions. Um, but yeah, that's that's roughly what we're looking for. We're looking for pretty equal across all the cars because they'll all be empty, all the same operating yeah. conditions. So these are the total laps of the cars. So yeah. car two was the. Uh, probably not now actually is it? No, so what we, we try and do when we are swapping cars out, when we haven't got all the cars on the track, once they've all had their weekly inspections, we'll then swap them out to try and keep the lowest number of uh, ride cars on the track and the highest number off the track when we're not running them all. So we're looking, we're approaching 400,000 times in its life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so if you, wow. Uh, if you add up the... Um, That's incredible. Yeah. Add up the track length, then uh, you'll see exactly how many miles these have done in their lifetime. I'm going to have to work that out now. Room, They've had lots of new parts in them. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. That's still incredible, though. Yeah. Well, massive thank you to the park for that. I hope you learned something there because I learned loads. Absolutely loads. What a fantastic coaster that is.